Employees are celebrating a co-worker's birthday at a power plant outside of town when they abruptly see something odd on the security cameras. When a worker investigates a shadow moving in the shaft, an enigmatic creature attacks them out of nowhere. When the man tries to get back to the workplace, a group of animals pursue him and begin murdering everyone inside the structure. The creatures start to materialize all over the earth as an eclipse obscures the sun, killing millions of people and wrecking cities. The news calls it Judgment Day as soldiers are sent to fight these monsters in a war that lasts the entire eclipse. Millions of lives and tons of resources are lost in the fight but eventually all the creatures are exterminated and humanity begins to rebuild. They design protective installations known as gates just in case the creatures decide to ever come back. Fifteen years pass, and the world is living through a normal routine again. Dave is working as a janitor for a company that doesn't pay him well even when he has to enter the shafts to get rid of dead animals. Laura teaches at a nearby school, where she makes friends with Milton, another teacher who persistently asks her out on dates. Laura is still resolving some difficulties from her long-ago divorce from Dave, but today she accepts Milton's invitation. In the meantime, Tyler, her son, is meeting with Maddie, his girlfriend, who is anxious about the impending eclipse. Tyler reassures her that nothing dangerous has transpired during the many eclipses that have occurred over the past 15 years. Officer Garrett receives a call in the interim from staff at one of the gates informing him that they have verified significant seismic activity and containment has been authorized. Garrett senses that this time isn't a drill as soon as he gets to the gate. When he checks on every system, a power box explodes and the entire grid is lost. In the city, Dave goes to pick up Tyler at Laura's house and while the boy plays video games the parents end up arguing. It turns out that Laura wasn't supported by Dave after the last catastrophe, and she still hasn't forgiven him. Laura was also expecting Tyler at the time. When Tyler interferes, he and his father are allowed to depart. Later on in the night, Uncle Ted calls Dave in the middle of the night to invite Dave to bring his family to his shelter before the eclipse starts. Uncle Ted, who is sure that the, the new judgment day, as Tyler watches the news, he notices that there are millions of dead fish washing up on beaches all around the world, which disturbs him. One of the indicators that was observed 15 years ago is this one. At that moment, the first monster appears at the gate, quietly sneaking up the stairs. At the same time, Laura calls Dave, saying that she's seen the news and wants Tyler to come home because Milton has reserved a shelter. After a disagreement over Dave's request for Tyler to stay with him, Tyler gets a text telling him to leave the house covertly. When Dave eventually locates him, all he discovers in his room is a letter with Maddie's phone number. Milton is always hurrying Laura because they need to get to the shelter quickly since it is getting full. After Laura informs Milton that Tyler has vanished, Milton uses the boy's phone information to locate him using specialized software at the skate park. It turns out Tyler is there with Maddie, who is very nervous and scared because her parents left. Tyler promises that he isn't like his dad and will never leave her alone. Suddenly a loud cry is heard and huge flocks of birds appear in the sky which is another sign of the reckoning. People in the park run in panic and soon the roads are filled with families trying to leave town. Dave gets stuck in a giant traffic jam but when he sees the birds fly by he leaves the car and continues the search on foot. At the gate, workers are checking the systems when they hear some strange sounds. Out of nowhere, a monster shows out and starts assaulting one of the men. Garrett flees as the other soldiers begin to fire, but it appears that the beast is unaffected by regular bullets. Just before the city's sirens begin to sound, Dave eventually locates Tyler and Maddie a little while later. Fortunately, Milton and Laura arrive, and the three of them are driven away in Milton's vehicle. The city is in total turmoil with just about an hour left until the eclipse. Every road is congested with traffic as people try to flee. After being stranded for some time, the family witnesses cultists circling the cars and frightening onlookers with their painted faces and sense that the end is near. When Milton finally sees an opening, he drives as fast as he can and manages to get the family to the shelter. Unfortunately, there's chaos here too with lots of people begging for a place inside while the military says that only women and children are allowed. Dave tells Tyler to go with Laura and Maddie into the shelter, but after stepping inside, Tyler regrets it and runs back to his father saying he would never leave him behind. The women follow him out and at that moment the scoreboard announces that the shelter is completely filled. The group discusses possibilities and dashes back to the car. Although Milton advises sheltering at the school because it's nearby and has a basement, Dave wants to go to Ted's hideout in the desert. 
They eventually find themselves in yet another traffic bottleneck and have to exit the vehicle just as the eclipse is about to start and there is an earthquake in the region. As darkness descends over the planet, the monsters begin to move out to attack. They seize control of the city right away and begin slaughtering people mercilessly, exactly like they did 15 years prior. Dave insists they should leave the city and wants to drive, but Milton gets angry because this is his car and he knows how to save everyone. An argument ensues and punches are thrown but the fight is interrupted when a flying monster dives in and takes Milton away. Willera screams Dave shoves her into the car and he takes over the wheel to finally take his family out of the city. As they drive along the canal, they discuss theories about the origin of the monsters wondering if they were sent by God or not. Eventually the car starts to run out of gas and Dave wants to find a replacement for it. When he parks close to several abandoned automobiles, he starts looking inside and finds that the cars contain bodies. When he eventually locates an empty one, he climbs in, only to have the driver, who is concealed in the rear seat, pull him down and warn him that a monster is close by. Thankfully it doesn't see the two men as it passes by and continues looking around the cars for additional victims. Dave starts rolling the car back to Laura and the kids very gently and silently, while the monster then finds one of the dead and starts eating it. Laura and the children are attempting to pass between the two automobiles now that they are side by side. They're very quiet about it but the monster still notices them and comes after them. The old man gets out of the car and sprinkles the beast with salt but this only stops the monster for a moment and then it jumps on the man to start devouring him. The family uses this distraction to finally drive away from the area, taking an abandoned road in the mountains while hordes of monsters flock to the city from all sides. Eventually, they finally make it to Ted's hideout which is a truly concrete bunker. The doors are closed and there are cameras on the roof but nobody comes out when the family begins yelling and hitting the door begging to be allowed inside. They have no idea that as a gun is being pointed at Ted's head, he is watching them on the webcams from his computer. A swarm of monsters suddenly materializes in the mountains and starts to move toward the shelter. At that moment, a horde of monsters appears in the mountains and begins rushing to the shelter. As the family panics Dave grabs a tire iron to protect his loved ones but then the door of the bunker finally opens and they rush inside. The family meets with Ted and his wife Stella, but they're also surprised to find Garrett. Apparently, his father used to be war buddies with Ted, and he got separated from his unit, so he came here to ask for help. Dava notices Garrett has a gun which makes him suspicious. The group then eats together, but as they watch, they can't help but notice that the monsters are attempting to destroy the door, which is making everyone anxious. They can only hear cries when using the radio, thus it is likewise pointless. Garrett responds that the monsters react to light and heat when Maddie asks how they perceive them, but he questions whether they are able to see people's souls. He also tells the tale of how he managed to escape the first judgment day by diving into a pond of salted mud while working at a refinery during the monster invasion. He had to watch as the creatures killed all of his friends and co-workers as he buried himself. While Garrett is distracted by his storytelling, Ted signals Dave to grab and hide a knife unaware that outside a centipede-like monsters crawling into a small hole in the mesh covering the window. Then Garrett announces he'll be on watch duty first, so Ted invites the others to stay and play cards instead of sleeping looking meaningfully at Dave. However, Garrett notices the gesture and pulls the gun out of its holster forcing Dave to put down the knife as he explains that Ted had been against allowing him to stay it was Stella who had to kempity on him. He survived the first time, and he's determined to survive again no matter the cost. Suddenly Tyler throws himself at Garrett to try to take the gun but Garrett just pushes him away. An argument ensues, but Maddie interrupts it by pointing out they can't hear the monsters anymore. Then the centipede-like monster jumps out of the wall and bites Stella. While Ted rips the creature off his wife's neck and pours salt on it, Dave punches Garrett to take his gun and tries to shoot the creature. The little monster dodges all the bullets, but Maddie manages to kill it with the knife. Afterward, they tie up Garrett and try to stop Stella's bleeding. But they'll need proper medical care. At that moment they notice on the monitor that a huge beast is repeatedly hitting the front door trying to get in. Dave suggests that they head off, but Ted is reluctant to leave, claiming that his wife won't make it. Stella urges him to go and informs him that there is an underground tunnel leading to the mountains beneath the bunker. The group isn't sure whether to believe Garrett when he claims he can drive them all to the gate and has a car with a full tank, but Garrett explains that helping them will benefit him. When they make the decision to depart, Ted shows he has an extensive weaponry and everyone equips themselves. Dave opens the front door and blows up the first beast that comes in before the others follow, while the party goes through the tunnel. Once the tunnel is properly closed, 
They go outside and notice Stella is having trouble walking because she's starting to transform into a beast too. Later, they're walking down a road when Tyler spots a monster just standing there. The beast seems to be dead, so Maddie tries to touch it only for Tyler to stop her. When she turns around, a long tentacle comes out of a hole in the ground and grabs her legs trying to drag her away. As Maddie screams wildly, Tyler and Dave hold her back and Laura shoots at the tentacle to make it retrieve. After Maddie escapes, the group flees and Garrett persuades Dave to release him so he may assist in the event of another attack. Unbeknownst to the others, Dave is concealing an injury on his arm. When they eventually reach the summit of the mountain, they discover the city is on fire. They are shocked to discover that Garrett's automobile won't start when they finally locate it. Stella steals Ted's gun to end things for herself before she completes her transformation, and Garrett frantically tries to start the engine again as creatures emerge on top of the mountain and start running toward them. Ted immediately fights her until he takes the gun back and begs her to get in the car but Dave knows there's no hope and drags Ted back. Stella waits for the monsters to arrive and they quickly eat her. Garrett finally manages to start the car and the group escapes leaving the monsters behind. On the way, they pick up a radio signal and hear that almost all the shelters couldn't withstand the onslaught and were ruined. Eventually they arrive at the gate, but nobody answers the radio, not to mention the door is open. The group carefully makes their way inside and discovers there's no power so Garrett and Dave decide to fix it while the others go to look for a first aid kit because they've discovered that Ted has a wound in his back. While Dave fixes the electricity and Garrett tells that the gate was ready for a second attack and that a lot of salt water had been poured in, the hole was too deep. The others tend to Ted. When the electricity comes back on, Dave and Garrett start to head back. Suddenly though, Garrett feels blood spilling on his palm and looks up to see a body while something roars in the shadows. With two hours remaining before the eclipse ends, the pair races back to the group to talk about their choices. Garrett suggests hiding in a chemical warehouse because its doors are bulletproof. The moment they leave the medical bay, a transformed human attacks Garrett, who fights together with Dave to deal with it. They defeat the beast, but the noise they made has gotten the attention of more monsters. Terrified, Garrett quickly runs through a door and closes it behind him, leaving everyone behind. Then he gives himself some kind of injection to start fighting back the transformation. Dave takes his family to another room and notices there are dispersal lines there, which means the tank is on the other side of the wall. This gives him an idea for a plan. He'll funnel the salt water through the tank pipes to keep the monsters out. Before he leaves Laura kisses him. At that moment, the door breaks, so the family runs away. Dave makes his way through the ventilation noticing a monster devouring its prey in the room. When he reaches the tank, he tries to be very quiet as he opens the faucet and water begins to fill the containers. Then Dave climbs back, but the monster senses him and starts to chase him grabbing his leg. As Dave fights back he sprinkles it with salt causing the monster to crumble to dust. Meanwhile, the others find themselves surrounded by monsters and Tyler opens fire on them. Suddenly Dave's voice is heard from the loudspeaker asking them to turn on the fire alarm. Ted orders Tyler to defend the family before pursuing the monsters with an axe as they approach, but multiple beasts attack him at once and swiftly murder him. After running out of ammunition, Tyler keeps shooting, but when the fire alarm goes off, salt water starts to fall all over the monsters, causing them to disintegrate into dust as they squeal in agony. At that point, the eclipse stops and all the monsters start returning through the gate to their realm, which sets off yet another earthquake. As Laura and the kids attempt to move, they run into Garrett, who is completely deranged by the change. He shoots Tyler and hits them on the shoulder, but before he can shoot again Dave appears behind him and hits Garrett in the head with a fire extinguisher. While Dave reunites with his family, a huge monster appears from below, and it lunges at Garrett, swallowing him whole. The family runs into the medical unit and makes a salty mixture in a cylinder, which they throw at the monster as soon as it kicks down the door, instantly killing it. Afterward, the family goes outside and finds the world has been utterly destroyed. But now they're ready to start rebuilding again.